They come in twos and threes, in family groups, crossing every day over unofficial borders. In six months, slowly but steadily, war in South Sudan has created more refugees than Syria or Iraq has in a year. Many have lived rough for months and walked days to get here to escape the civil war. They are killing people, sleeping with the wives, stealing. They are not shooting you, they cut with you with a knife. He says the violence is ethnic-based. The UN has warned there are signs it's heading towards genocide. This is one of the many crossing points on the border between Uganda on this side and South Sudan, where these ladies are coming from. Since July, every single day, on average, two and a half thousand people have moved into Uganda. That means in that short space of time, there are 340,000 new refugees. They're gathered up and brought to here, one of the refugee reception centers. Names are taken. Malnutrition levels checked and children immunized. This family fled the killing and walked for three days, carrying one year old twins. It was just very hot because those people were killing people actually. If you're a boy, you will be killed. If you're a girl or a woman, you just, they will just rape you. If not, you will be killed. Within 24 hours, they're transported here. Biddy Biddy Settlement, they call it. It's gone from a small village to one of the world's biggest refugee camps in less than six months. A quarter of a million people in 250 square kilometers. Faida Sara has only been here since August, but already has crops to harvest. Every family is given a plot of land. The Ugandans prioritize dignity for refugees. But everyone has a terrible story. Faida Sara left when her husband was hacked to death by soldiers outside their home. So that's South Sudan, this is Uganda, that's the borderline. Um, all the blue arrows are the way... The UNHCR is helping to coordinate the response with the government. We opened Bidi Bidi's uh, settlement on the 4th of August. As per yesterday, we have 253,000 people. We are also very stretched because we don't have enough resources. We are struggling with water. To put this in context, we need like 4 million litres of water per day. And right now, we are able to provide just about half of that. To help ease their trauma, school children are taught songs rejecting hatred. And for 16-year-old budding poets like Patricia Mercy, that's harder than it should be. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are you and where do you come from? You have killed my mother, father, even my brothers and sisters. The resilience she shows while performing her poem slips when you ask her what happened. The time we are coming, we are attacked by people in the bus. And then they took my parents and they killed. How did you escape? Me? I just ran the bush and I'm following some people who are coming here. It's one of the biggest refugee crises in the world right now. But few have noticed or know about the atrocities in South Sudan, the ethnic-based violence, the rape, the killing, the collapse of the world's youngest country. Alastair Luther, BBC News, Uganda.